Welcome everyone to today's uh, webinar from the Open Group. Today we're talking about the combined use of the TOGAF framework with the Archimate language. And we have three members of the Project Harmony team here um, to give us some presentations. So Bill, if you're ready, can I ask you to um, start today's presentation? Thank you, Simon. Yeah, this is Bill Estrom, and I welcome you to our webinar on the Practitioner's Guide to Using the TOGAF Framework in the Archimate Language. With me today, I've got uh, two of my colleagues that have really uh, been the major writers and contributors to the Project Harmony activity. Uh, Sonia Gonzalez, who uh, originally was working as a, um, a member of uh, due diligence in Costa Rica, and today she has taken a position as the Architecture Forum Director at the Open Group, and so uh, that's kind of exciting. And Serge Thorne, uh, when he originally was doing this work, uh, he was with Architect in the Enterprise as the CIO, and today he's uh, working with us and uh, at Metaplexi. So uh, today's agenda, we're just going to basically do some brief introductions and then uh, talk about some of the issues related to architecture modeling and the TOGAF framework, and especially using the uh, Archimate language. And we'll talk about some of the activities that are going on within and, uh, Project Harmony, which is an activity at the Open Group uh, in the Architecture Forum and the and the uh, Archimate Forum, and talk about especially what we've just completed recently in our uh, Phase One efforts uh, to really take a look at you know what do we need to do to make it easier for practitioners to to use these two standards together. So we'll start by looking at the glossary of terms, which you know might, you might not appreciate how important having a common language is, but I think. Uh, one of the strengths of, of both these frameworks is they try and impose a, a standard language that we can use when we're discussing things so that we get consistency and understanding. <clears throat> so we'll start out with that. Uh, then we'll go ahead and take a look at kind of the, the deep down uh, relationships that exist uh, in each of the frameworks uh, between you know, how we do the modeling, the, the content that we're modeling uh, or using to model. So we'll take a look at the entities that we're using as modeling objects and also the relationships between those entities. And then finally, Serge will come back in and talk about uh, viewpoints, which is another area where we really need to be able to have a common perspective. And uh, so we'll talk about some of the issues there. At the end, we'll do our conclusion. And, uh, and then we really want to open it up and provide about 10 minutes or so of, of Q&A. So basically, some of the issues that we have uh, as we try and do architecture modeling today is you know, there's a lot of different modeling tools out there. And uh, many of them use things like UML and, and other standards. But uh, the Open Group has recently, in the past five or six years, introduced uh, the Archimate language. And, uh, and they've been working to develop TOGAF for almost 20 years now. And so uh, these standards are basically meant to work together. They've been designed that way, but they do have different origins. You know, TOGAP is, traces back its heritage all the way back to the early TAFM framework of the U.S. Department of Defense. And Archimate uh, is much more recent, uh, having been originally developed in the Netherlands by the Informatica Institute and other participants, and then turned over to the Open Group in 2009. So because of that, they do have some differences. They're designed to work together, but they are separate, distinct standards. They are pretty compatible, but there are differences, and that's what Project Harmony is trying to, to focus on, is you know, how can we identify these things and talk about ways of working around them. So EA practitioners want to be able to use the TOGAP standard in their enterprise architecture practices, and they want to be able to develop and migrate models for those practices based on the TOGAP architecture content framework and its meta model, but also to the Archimate language. And again, the TOGAP is a framework, and uh, I think we'll point out uh, several times that, uh, that Archimate is a specific notation for developing views. So it's a language that really gives us a very precise way of expressing our models. So integrating TOGAP and Archimate is a really key objective here. If you take a look at this, this is one of the standard pictures that we use to really describe the differences. So TOGAP as a framework has a lot of strength in the area of process. Uh, it also has a content framework and viewpoints and repositories and those kind of things. Uh, Archimate, on the other hand, is a language. It does not itself have a procedure for, for doing architecture, but it's a language for describing it. So it's pretty much all about content. And we need to be able to store and manage that content in our repository 
in a way that's interoperable with the TOGAP standard and with other, other standards as well. So that's where we got started with Project Harmony. Uh, we've been at it for a little bit over two years, and uh, the result has been uh, for the phase one activity, uh, the production of three major white papers describing the different areas that we're looking at, and then also uh, this practitioner's guide that we'll be focusing on. So again, the goal here is to enhance the ability to use the frameworks together. But it is not the goal that we're trying to like consolidate the standards into a unified standard. That is not. We want to keep them as separate uh, entities that uh, people can decide to use independently. So we're basically looking at a way of comparing certain aspects of the two standards and then seeing if we can recommend ways of working around some of the differences that we discover. So yeah, these are the four areas. I've already mentioned them. The glossaries and terms, the content and metamodels that are provided in TOGAF and Archimede. And in particular, we'll focus on the entities and the relationships uh, in those. And then the viewpoints, the architecture viewpoints that are really linked to the stakeholders and how we express the model to the stakeholders. So the TOGAF standard is an, a standard for enterprise architecture. Uh, the three major areas that it has is the architecture development method, which is certainly one of its core strengths. Uh, the architecture content framework, which has been greatly improved in the TOGAF 9 uh, time period. Uh, and then the architecture capability, which is something really added in TOGAF 9 that really gives us the ability to establish and operate an architecture capability. So it is important to note that the architecture content framework, even though it's very powerful and very uh, significant contribution to TOGAF, we have designed it so that it is an optional framework. So if you wish to use TOGAF with other frameworks, uh, like, for example, Dodat or uh, Zachman, then you can do that. In the same way, the Archimate language is an enterprise architecture modeling language standard, and it gives us the ability to model and using active objects that perform behavior, passive objects that have um, behaviors performed on them, and then it also allows us to connect these together with relationships in a much more uh, fine-grained approach than TOGAF does. And, uh, and again, just like TOGAP, we do have the ability to extend the framework. Uh, so the Archimate standard provides some extensions straight out. So yeah, here's a picture of the TOGAP content framework. Uh, those of you that are TOGAP certified probably are quite familiar with this. And again, we start out by trying to create deliverables that basically describe architectures. As part of that, we're basically using artifacts like catalogs, matrices, and diagrams which together describe these building blocks and how they're related to each other in architecture definitions. And then some of those models and some of those artifacts will be considered reusable objects. And after certain governance procedures, they'll be placed into the repository as reusable objects, reusable building blocks. We also have this kind of underlying grammar, if you will, for the content framework, which is the meta model. And this particular view of the meta model basically shows uh, by ADM phase, uh, the different content elements and entities that are in the meta model. So I'm not going to go too deeply into this right now. But again, this is a standard view in TOGAF. And then we have the more logical model that really shows you the representation of the entities and the relationships between the entities and, and also a description of the relationships, you know, like who owns the, the business service and things like that are, are named relationships. Content meta model basically is a way of giving you traceability between the stakeholders' concerns and constraints back to the actual model itself. And so TOGAP has this core meta model, which gives you really the basic stuff for traceability. And then for certain types of activities, uh, we have a set of extensions that we had, which I will explain a little bit. And uh, so these extensions give you finer grain of detail. So basically one of the things about TOGAP is it's really always been designed to uh, to really interoperate with other frameworks and languages and things like that. And I think in the same way, uh, Archimate is designed that way as well. So it's not uncommon to see people using a mix of different languages to describe their models or different using different models for different domains and things like that. And then again, as I mentioned, we can substitute our content framework with other frameworks like Dodap and Zachman. So then the Archimate standard basically um, provides this ability to describe entities and the relationships between those entities. And then you can basically move down through the stack here and you can get more specific about things like 
applications and processes and functions. And then you go down all the way to the meta model level where you really talk about the relationships between these things and domain specific ways. So as you look at the picture here, you'll see that TOGAP basically in its traditional view of the, of the enterprise architecture, uh, the um, architecture development method, uh, you can see that as we progress through the ADM uh, in the early early stages, uh, we see that uh, we have the the motivation meta model, which is really um, all about you know why are we doing architecture, why are we doing this particular business, and then as we move through the rest of the ADM, uh, basically we start going through the actual core modeling. So the architecture vision. We still are working at the motivation level. And then as we get into the actual modeling in the architecture definition phases of the TOGAP ADM, you can see that that's also um, basically linking the Archimate core, where we talk about the business layers, the application layers, and the technology layers. And then, uh, and then as we move into the um, phases E and F and on into G, we're doing the implementation migration and uh, things related to that. So yeah, here you can see that the Archimate language has a generic meta model, which is what's displayed here. And then it also has a separate related meta model for every layer and extension that's provided in the Archimate language. TOGAF, on the other hand, uh, provides basically this core and extended meta model. And it also gives you the ability to define your own model if you wish, okay? So I think when you're customizing, for example, your repositories to do certain types of modeling, then you might create a custom extension. Uh, but for basic TOGAP definition, we just um, we just have the uh, core and extended minimal. So that's it. The uh, basically our key findings is that as we went through the project harmony activities, we certainly discovered that there were differences to be had between the different areas. The major areas that we'll look at today are glossary viewpoints, the metamodel entities, and the metamodel relationships. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Serge Thorne, and uh, let Serge take it over and talk a little bit about some of the work that he's been doing, not only with uh, the Project Harmony work, but he's also been one of the leaders. Um, he's been one of the leaders of the localization uh, committee, which basically is trying to create country-specific translation glossaries for so for TOGAF and also for Archimate. So Serge, uh, go ahead and tell yes, us thank about you, Bill. the glossaries. So the subject now is going to compare, obviously, uh, the different glossaries between TOGAF and Archimate. Uh, the two standards have two sets of glossaries. As you may see on that slide, uh, there is also a glossary for TOGAF 9.1 which is represented on the right side of the slide that you can download, uh, obviously, from uh, either the, the link that you find here or directly into the book. So that's going to be shown in the next slide where you see that the standards contain certain number of terms which comes from different parts from the TAGAP standards. Those different uh, glossaries have been translated uh, these last years in different languages. So you may also want to download those glossaries. As you may see, we have actually more than 10 or 15 different glossaries, uh, and it's always the same format. So you'll see that you have one column with the terms uh, from the standard specification written in English, and on the right side, you will have the translation. So if you click on that link, you will find also those ones available for download. Here is an example of how the glossary looks like. So you see you have the, the title of the, the term, like applications architecture. Then you have the descriptions. It's classified alphabetically. And then obviously, depending on the type of language, you may have different translations. And then the reference to the TAGAF 9.1 specifications. The reference is coming from the chapter three, and there is also an appendix A. There is also glossaries for Archimate 2.1. Uh, another link is provided there, and the same thing happens. You also will see that you have one column with the terms from Archimate, and then different possibility of translation. So here again, on the next slide, you'll see different links to the different existing 
uh, glossaries which have been translated. Both Standards, both Togaf and Archimate will have new translations in the future. So here you see two different levels in the Archimate uh, glossary. Uh, the part which is on the top under 2.2 is obviously uh, specific to Archimate. And the definitions below, as you may see, the reference is different because it comes from the Togaf specifications. This means that sometimes we have terms derived from Togaf, and some of them we have terms which are specific to the Archimate standard. Here again, we do have obviously created a, doc a first document. Uh, this document is also downloadable. It's called the Glossaries Comparisons, which is going to compare the two glossaries between Archimate and Togaf. So obviously what we try to do in this document is obviously to try to understand what are the different uh, elements coming from uh, Togaf and the one which were specific to Togaf. So the idea was to say, okay, do we have the same meanings? Do we have different meanings? And we came up with some documents which would compare the two. So the glossary comparison as a standard was to identify the different terms which were uh, not totally perfectly aligned between the two standards. Sometimes we have a perfect consistency between the two, the two specifications. Sometimes there had to be some differences, but the idea was not obviously to uh, substitute one term with the others, but simply to identify when the terms are different and when the terms are the same, or sometimes the terms exist in one glossary and do not exist on the other one. So the output of this document, uh, as you see, there are different columns. The first column will be the term, which represents uh, the name of the, 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 the elements from the specification. Then we have the description. So one column will represent the description specific to Togaf 9.1. The third column will be the term specific to the Archimate 2.1 glossary. So that would help us to obviously do the comparison. So as an output of the, the study, what we had was uh, three different possibilities called the mapping status. So uh, in white, that means there is no correspondence. So it means that the term exists either in one standard and not the other one. Uh, if it's orange, that means uh, there are different definitions. And if it's green, it's the same one. It means that it's being just replicated from the Tagaf 91 specifications. Then some comments, uh, if uh, there was something to, to refer to, to uh, justify the difference, or maybe some suggestions to improve eventually in the future the mapping. And the last column will be related to not the, the terms from the chapter three, but from the appendix A. So the appendix A is at the end, and this has been added uh, also in the glossary. Next. Here's an example. Uh, you see that we have the term business functions. The business function has a specific uh, description in the Togaf 91 specification, but it has a different one uh, when we, you look at the Archimate uh, specification. So I'm not going to read the two, but you see that sometimes you have to think, okay, which one is uh, the right one? So you have to decide in your uh, all your organizations which one makes much more sense. Here's another one, product. As you see in Tregaf 91, it has a meaning, uh, which is the output generated by the business. And in Archimate, we have uh, different definitions. So again, when you have to align the different glossaries for your organizations, you have to change uh, eventually the way you have defined one of the other to support the needs of the business. So which one makes much more sense for your different stakeholders? Here is a few examples. So you see the first line, uh, access. So this is a term which is part of the Archimate 2.1 transaction glossary. There is no mapping with the GAF. Obviously, the term access may exist somewhere, but it's not a term coming from Chapter 3 or from the Appendix A. There is no command and there is no supplementary definitions. However, you see the second one, uh, actor and business actor. We do have 
two different definitions. Uh, the one on the left side, uh, which is coming from Tagav, the second one, which is inside uh, Archimate, and we just decided that there was a, co a correspondence, but a difference, that's the reason why the box is in orange. And the third case, which is architecture, as you may have heard, this is exactly the same definitions in both standard. That's the reason why you have the green colors in the mapping status. And here is the last example uh, where you see that uh, we have put a comment uh, for a data object. The comment could be like here, a relationship with the graph data entity and data element. And the last column, uh, which is the splendor definitions, is coming from the appendix A. So it's not really part of the glossary, but it's what you may find in the appendix. So it's all documented in something like 40 pages. So now uh, the findings are that uh, sometimes you will have to identify uh, what does mean, for example, for your organizations, an actor or business actor, because the actor and the business actor exist in both uh, specifications, but it may have different meanings. As you may see, we also have in Tragraph something called an auction unit, but the unit does not exist as such into Archimate. So you may also have to find a way of aligning those, and you will see that with the viewpoints. Or for the role, you have a perfect uh, mapping, like the business service, but there's nothing in terms of business subject inside the TAGAP specification. So the, the conclusions for the glossary, uh, sometimes there are different meanings, and you will have to define uh, within your organizations which definitions is much more appropriate, uh, which one would obviously uh, create more value for the stakeholders, which one will not create confusion or misunderstanding by your stakeholders, and basically it depends on each situation. So we are not recommending to use one or the other, but you'll have to identify that there are differences and find the best definition for your organization. Uh, so we're going to talk here about the meta models. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the TOGAP framework gives you a core meta model, which gives you the basic stuff that you need for traceability uh, when you're doing your modeling. And then if you have special needs, you can go ahead and add in the extension meta models. <clears throat> and so we've got the motivation model that kind of talks about why we do things from a business perspective. <clears throat> Governance is basically measuring how well we're doing against our goals. Process modeling gives us the ability to do more fine-grained processing, uh, process design and process modeling. Data extension basically gives us uh, more fine-grained information about the data. Uh, and then services extension, uh, in the current version of TOGAP, the only services extension that's there is the information service extension, which gives you a, a mapping between the business service and the underlying application uh, components and logical application components. So in the TOGAP document, in the chapter on better models, there are three tables. There's one table on entities, which basically has a list of all the entities. There's a second table that, that talks about the relationships between the entities, and that's what Sonia will be talking about next. And then there's a final table that talks about the attributes that could be assigned uh, from the TOGAP standard right to the entities. And again, you can change these things if you need to for your own organization, and you, and you probably will want to when you're when you're coming up with your organizational specific uh, framework. So here you can see a, an entity and its definition, a couple of them. And uh, so that's pretty much the way that that table looks. So in our activities with Project Harmony, uh, we did a pretty detailed comparison of all of the uh, terminology the, that are used for modeling, all the entities, and basically then compared them to Archimate. And largely, you know, there's very good compatibility between the two. So many of these things were green, meaning a strong fit. And um, for some things, there was a weak fit. Uh, for example, here, the business interaction, which is a level of detail that's appropriate for the Archimate language, uh, is not something that, that is done in TOGAP architecture modeling typically. But if you need to, you know, there's ways of dealing with that. You can create um, various uh, techniques to specialize the description of the process or function to give you that indication of uh, how you're going to do your business interaction. And the same thing is true with business objects. You know, uh, in TOGAP, we have a separate data layer. And in Archimate, the data is basically embedded in the different layers. 
So you have a business layer, an application layer, and a technology layer, and there's different types of entities in each one. So that can be somewhat uh, troublesome, but not too, because it's, the data is still there, it's just that it's located in different layers. So our key findings basically were that uh, the TOGAP on the left-hand side here, we talk about things that are unique to the TOGAP content framework, uh, structured according to the content meta models. And the metal models give you a single view that encompasses all four domains, and they are defined at a level of detail that is typically very useful for enterprise architecture modeling. But then when you're actually starting to do more detailed modeling to address specific stakeholder concerns and things like that, then the Archimede modeling uh, language gives you a more detailed set of metal model entities and relationships in particular. It does not really give you uh, specifically out of the box a lot of information about the attributes, whereas TOGAP does, but um, the attributes are, can be added, you can, can specialize the entities to create uh, uh, attributes. The uh, Archimate meta models are derived from a common meta model, which is a, that's almost like a meta meta model, it's an underlying grammar that all of the other meta models conform to. And then for each of the different areas, like the business layer, the applications layer, the technology layer or the specialization of the um, extensions, there's a meta model for each of those then. Again, we have the four domains that TOGAP uses for modeling, whereas Archimate only uses the three layers plus the extensions. Uh, Archimate also goes further into defining an entity in terms of whether or not it's an active element, a passive element, or a behavior element. So that's a pretty good summary of the things that we found, and again, reading the papers that we have on our website, on the Open Group Publications website, uh, you'll get a lot more information, but it's all very similar to what I've just described. So now I'd like to turn it over to Sonia and have her talk a little bit about entity and their relationships. Okay, thanks, Bill. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here in this webinar. Uh, the next one, please, uh, Bill. Uh, uh, when it comes to relationship, I think like the differences are similar in, uh, in nature than the ones that we have seen in glossaries and also in the entities, because like I said at the beginning, uh, both are standards, but TOGAF is a standard framework for making enterprise architecture, while Archimate is a uh, modeling and, and specification made for modeling enterprise architecture. So that's why they are different. For example, we have like a high level uh, key finding that we will have, for example, in relationship in, in TOGAF are not classified. They don't have a specific notation. They are just, uh, they are lines that are like uh, putting together and connected the different entities that belong to the content matter model. And they, they don't have a specific rules like, for example, for in the right relationship, that the one that we have in Archimate, uh, they don't have, like, uh, a specific direction, and they are not specifically read from left to right uh, with the same commutation that we have uh, in Archimate. For example, in Archimate, we, say we have uh, the use by or use relationship, and that one could be long, uh, could be mapped with several different relationships in in TOGAF, and one of the could be could be for example perform only perform by. So we will see this difference uh, during the presentation. And like Bill said, and also search if you can move further, you will find in the white papers a very detailed mapping between the every relationship going from TOGAF to argument and vice versa. Okay, here for example, here we have one example: the aggregation relationship. Uh, we have a very specific notation and concept, conceptualization in Archimed for aggregation, which makes made basically the temporary grouping of some elements, for example, roles that could be together and, and perform uh, um, some kind of behavior that would be like a, uh, the behavior made, but that's a specific aggregation of elements. We don't have that specific relation in TOGA. In TOGA, we only have the decomposed relationship. So that will mean that we're using it in a specific modeling a real case, we should uh, see the context and uh, see, for example, we have two specific roles that are like uh, forming a teamwork that will be like uh, a decomposition in TOGAF that it will belongs to the aggregation because it's just some people that are gathering together to perform a behavior. And so it will depend, next one, Bill, it will depend on the particular context. They have to be used depending on the context of the modeling. 
In the next one, the same will happen with the specialization. We don't have that specific concept uh, for relationship uh, in TOGAF. However, TOGAF can, can, can uh, allow defined taxonomies or additional attributes to the, the different elements to the pick that. For example, we have uh, in the left side, we have a, a Archimate model, which is showing like a, like a node or a system software or the specialization and a device or a system software or the specialization of a node. And also we, we can find some time of assignment between a, a node um, uh, a system software and a device. And that this composition could also be fine in TOGAF. On the other hand, on the right side, we have, for example, that we can also define or make this mapping. For example, uh, a node can be mapped with a logical technology component in TOGAF and a device and a system software can be mapped to a physical technology component. And both of them can be related in a taxonomy definition or with a realization relationship in TOGAF, like you will see on the, on the right side of this particular slide. Again, it would depend on the conceptualization of the particular situation. Also, we have difference with dynamic relationship. Another big difference is like TOGAF is not making a classification relationship. And we have, for example, in Archimate, uh, we have like the relationship that are more like for structure and the ones that are dynamic. And for example, for dynamic, we have the flow relationship and uh, the trigger relationship. Or we also have uh, the ones that are like, uh, they can be like, like a non and or, or like junction relationship. How we can map this with, with TOGA, we can also use the TOGA control elements, which is part of the process extension uh, in TOGA content meta model to depict that. And also we can use the event element that is also present in, uh, in the talk of content matter mode. To depict, for example, that one process is, uh, is triggering another one or is having some kind of control. And then we can either represent uh, a talk of control element in there or a, an event that is actually triggering the other behavior. So in that, that sense, we can see like we can do this mapping. Also, the use and use by, this is a relationship that they have, we have several mappings. If you go into the detailed document, you will see that uh, one single relationship and in Archimate could become three or four in TOGAF. Again, how we can use this, it will depend on the proper context and we are making the modeling. And in real cases, we do that. Like we said at the beginning, uh, we have some specific needs uh, in our business and organization to model. Uh, so you choose uh, using TOGAF as a general framework we can take the content meta model or I can take another one. And also we can pick Archimate like a modeling language. And at the end, we'll come up with our version of Archimate and TOGAF. And you, we, we can also make some changes or a specialization in the elements. That's the way, the way that, that Archimate can be extensible. You either using a specialization or you either using profiling. For example, in this particular case, we have in TOGAF with a process and a service, one of the relationships that can fit in there is supports and orchestrates. This can be also represented in Archimate using the use or use by relationship and the realization relationship between a business process and a business service. And this can also apply to the different uh, layers in Archimate that are used to using that relationship, use and use by. So you can, again, you can go into the mapping that we have in the white paper that you can download in the open group site, and you will see there how we, we have made a very specific and detailed mapping uh, with these uh, differences that we, we are making here. But the main thing here to have clear is like the how are we going to use a particular relation will depend on the needs that the stakeholder uh, are, are asking about a particular model. Also, the access relationship. Uh, we have a very specific access relationship uh, that is mostly between uh, active and passive elements or entities in Archimate. Uh, we don't have a specific access relationship in TOGAF, however, if we see the, diff the relation between, for example, a business service and a data entity, we see that the relation can be there either consume or, or provide or access by. And at the end, it's similar because you will see that, for example, a particular business service is accessing or having an access to the particular uh, business object in order to consume some of the information that is inside the data entity or provide some information to this particular data entity, either for consult or for update or for access. So that we, we can see that could also be a very good map. And again, we can have, have the assess the particular needs that we are having for making the model having, of course, in mind that the main goal here is to address specific stakeholder concerns and needs. 
for implementation and migration extension, I think that's interesting because if we, if you see talk of a content meta model, you will see that we have like in the upper part of the model, the content meta model, you will, we will see different, uh, entities like, for instance, uh, the work package, the work package, the deliverables, the requirement, the principles, and all of them are related with the rest of the, of the elements or entities in the core meta model. Uh, Archimay handle is a little, uh, different because Archimay has a very specific extension for implementation and migration. So like uh, we are seeing here in the example, we, ha we have the gap, which is uh, relating to different plateaus. Plateaus is also an element that does not exist like that in Toga. This is a, a difference that is also depicted in the entities mapping. Also, we can see like always with the app, we have to relate a particular work package and that work package will be delivering or realization or providing some specific core elements, like in this example, application components. So since we have more specific notation in the entities and relationship in the implementation and migration extension in argument, I think that that can really be used to leverage TOGA uh, for phase A and F. That are the phases in which are actually making the, the, the solution building blocks models and the actual implementation models. So in this way, I think that these differences that are between the two standards uh, are, are, are really telling us that Archimate is made to deliver more specific notation modeling and just TOGAF is just providing the general rules. So some key findings in here, for example, we have here another example. Uh, like uh, some of the relationships that we have in Archimedes, they, they have not like uh, so clearly the governance uh, meaning, like the, the ones that we have uh, in TOGAF, like the govern and measure by relationship that you will find between a, a, a service and a product. But we do have, uh, for example, in, in Archimedes definition of a product, that a product is a collection or an aggregation of business services and, 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 a, and, and a contract. So we can put additional elements for governing measure in a contract, and in that way you're also fulfilling the need that we that TOGAF is, is talking about regarding governance, how a particular business service uh, have to be uh, being governed and measured by a contract. So that, that, that can also be depicted and, and used uh, applying different entities and different relationships that we also have in our domain. Okay, well, thank you very much, Sonia. Okay. Now I'll get into our final topic, which is uh, putting all these things together into a set of viewpoints that the stakeholders can basically look at to see that their concerns are being addressed. Serge? Okay. So the next subject, uh, first, there is a few findings about the mapping between the viewpoints between Tagaf and Archimedes. So the first, the first thing you need to know that there is a document that you can obviously download uh, with the link, uh, which will give you, uh, I think, five different examples. So I'm just going to present one of the five. Uh, the other four will obviously be described in that document that you can download. So a few observations. Uh, you need also to realize that that document uh, is obviously done to explain how you can take one viewpoint from TOGAF and transform it into an Archimate one. Uh, it's working quite well together. Sometimes there is some uh, modification which required to be done. Uh, sometimes you need to adapt, but uh, sometimes you may also find that the viewpoints that are different are very different. So when you will look at that document, you will see that uh, we don't use colors, but we use a shading approach when there is no real match. So you'll see in that document uh, the list of the different uh, existing viewpoints from Archimate, the one from Togaf, and when there is a correspondence. So the structure of the document is the following. Uh, you have the name of the Archimate 2.1 viewpoint, which is obviously related to one of the sections of the specification. Then the description of uh, that viewpoint from Archimate. And then we map the different TOGAF uh, 91 artifacts. When I say we map the, the different one, because you can have, for example, one viewpoint from Archimate and several TOGAF 91 artifacts. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it could be several. Then the description which obviously maps to the definition of the artifact, and also finally the phase where you're supposed to document that artifact, the phase of the ADM. So here's an example. On the first column, you see introductory viewpoint, then you have the description of the viewpoint, and then there is the mapping on the right side where we say that an introductory viewpoint may 
be quite similar to either a solution concept diagram or a business footprint diagram. Uh, then you'll see that the descriptions on the right side obviously relate to the TGAF 91 artifact. And the last column is uh, referring to the ADM phase, in this case, the phase A. Here in these situations, uh, we have uh, also one example, the first line where we have a business process cooperation viewpoint, the descriptions. We say that we have a correspondence with the linear event diagram, part of the phase B. But as you may have said, the second one, the product viewpoint, doesn't have uh, uh, something equivalent in the TGAF 91 artifacts. So this is why it's shitted out. And the last one is the same one. There is no uh, Archimede 2.1 viewpoint referring to a benefits diagrams within the specification. So that will help you to see how you can eventually automate from one uh, standard to the other one. So here's an example. Uh, this one is based on uh, one of the TGAF artifacts. Obviously, every company has different ways of modeling uh, the different artifacts because there is not a standard as we have in our Archimate. You're free to have different sort of shapes, but uh, when you look at the specifications, you're supposed in an organization decomposition diagram and auction viewpoint uh, to describe the auction units, the locations which are in red, uh, here we also see actors in green and the roles in yellow. You have probably seen before that there is no correspondence or there is no auction unit uh, in Archimate. So you have to identify how am I going to transform that artifact from Tugaf inside uh, Archimate. So you may say that also an organization is a type of actors. So then you can end up with different ways of doing the modeling within an Archimate diagram. So the first one, which is on the next slide, oh, sorry, I just forget to add uh, the descriptions here, which refers to what means, obviously, uh, an organization within the Archimate specifications. So as you see on the right side, here we have a viewpoint uh, called the Archimate viewpoint, the org viewpoints with the definitions, where we say it's focused on the organizations of a company, a department of a network and so on. And what I've done here is just to recreate uh, the name of uh, Archie Enterprise, HQ, Division A, Division B, and then the different links to the different locations on the right side, and on the left side, uh, the relationship between actors and roles. As you see, I've transformed the auction units and subunits into actors in Archimate, and I've added uh, collaborations between the two business roles. So you see, you will have to interpret and see how it works for your organizations. So that's one possibility of transforming uh, the TGAF artifacts into the Archimate viewpoints. And the second possibility would be that uh, you define everything as actors. So here I've added a third level. So I see my Archie Enterprise, which is an actor, then I see uh, HQ and Division A and B, and then the different actors like Senior VP and so on. So that's two ways, in fact, of representing the same tug of artifacts. So that's going to be the tricky part of the exercise. So the mapping clearly shows that uh, there may be interpretations between auction actors and roles, uh, but at the end, when you present uh, the two different viewpoints, uh, they may look slightly different, but they should convey the same message. So the conclusions is that uh, you should first really understand the meaning of all the different elements from both specifications to do it uh, the right level of, of mapping. Uh, you also may need to adapt uh, that terminology to fit with the organization, something you will address while you do the primary phase. And sometimes those viewpoints may have to customize, adapt it, or they may be to be changed to address the stakeholder needs. So that's the way you will have to do it. Uh, also remember that when you develop your tug of artifact, there's not a standard or predefined shape as we do have inside uh, Archimate. But the idea is that you try really to align uh, the essence and the message that you try to pass to the different stakeholders. Well, thank you, sir. <clears throat> So just to sum up before we go into our questions and answers sessions, um, you know, I think the two frameworks are very compatible and complementary of each other, but not surprisingly, uh, there are differences, and I think we've addressed 
some of those differences, our papers obviously get into much more detail. And uh, so you can take a look at those. So we're identifying, Project Harmony is trying to identify the differences and proposed ways of resolving them. So I think as far as the practitioners go, you know, our papers that we've published uh, basically have that information. And now as we move on to other activities with Project Harmony, we're looking at ways that we can improve the standards in the future and, and uh, so things that we might be able to do to kind of maybe resolve some of these differences that we see, things like that. So anyway, just to sum up here, we have uh, the documents that have now been published, all four are now out on the Open Group website. Uh, there is a zip file somewhere, I don't know exactly, it's, it should be right there, that has all four documents that you can download in one zip file. But um, I didn't see it this afternoon when we were looking around for it, so I might have moved someplace. But if you go to the Open Group Publications Library, there's just a whole bunch of really good information in there about TOGAF and Archimate and other standards from the Open Group. Uh, but the four documents that we've got are listed here, along with their publication number, like W14C for the Practitioner's Guide and A for the Harmonization of Glossaries, and et cetera. So I hope that you'll get a chance to take a look at those. I certainly would start with the Practitioner's Guide, and then if you need more information, I would, I would recommend that you take a look at the uh, other more detailed documents. So with that, uh, Simon, I'm ready to uh, field some questions. Question from Kevin. Can you just elect to adopt Archimate as the metal model to represent a TOGAF model? And he says that is use Archimate instead of using that part of the TOGAF meta model. Yeah, I think that that's exactly what we designed the content framework in TOGAF so that it could be replaced with another content framework. Okay. And so I don't see any reason why you couldn't do that. Yeah. So like, uh, you know, let's just say, for example, that the that the TOGAP viewpoints are not consistent with the way that you want to present things, uh, then you could go ahead and just switch totally over to an Archimate um, content framework. Um, so, or you could try and adapt the two and uh, you know, try and get some of the models that are in TOGAP and create viewpoints in your modeling tool that would do those things. And within certain limits, I think you can do that. Yeah, I think I agree with the, with the Bill's uh, response. I think like uh, like we said at the beginning, uh, you can use TOGAF with other framework, or you can use the content model, model and use another modeling language with BPMN if you're modeling, for example, processes or UML, or you can choose Archimate, or you can take also the decision and saying, okay, uh, I have uh, uh, delivered my my enterprise architecture framework is aligned with TOGA, but for modeling or for content framework, I'd rather use Archimate. It's also a very valid decision. And at the end, I think it would depend of our the stakeholder concerns and needs, even for the viewpoints, because even though Archimate and also TOGAF has a list of suggested viewpoints, that doesn't mean they are like written in stone. I mean, my point is like, for example, if you need a new viewpoint, for example, depicting some kind of product a life cycle, for example, or product categories, you can take a viewpoint, a system viewpoint, and make some modifications on that, or create your new point, and a new viewpoint for that, and for that you will use different elements and entities. And also, if you see the different the difference that we have pointed out today, they are all related because if you have differences in terms and terminologies, then that will lead to having also some differences in the entities because the different metamorphs have different levels of detail. And at the end, it will lead a difference also in the relationship and in the viewpoint. So all of them are related. And the core thing here is to choose whichever option will fit better for your organizational needs. Great. Thank you, Sonia. There's a question from Paul asking, what will be the next steps in terms of truly harmonizing TOGAF and Archimate and making Archimate the language of TOGAF? I may take that one, Bill. So okay. I'm, cur I'm currently working on the phase two, which started uh, just before Christmas. So what I've been doing right now uh, for those interested, you may obviously join uh, that project. Uh, the idea is to compare, obviously, all the different terms from the glossaries, from both standards, and then come with recommendations, try to 
uh, come with a single definition when it's possible. It's not always possible. Sometimes uh, the definition doesn't make much sense to be added to a Togaf or the other way around. doesn't make much, much sense to, to put in our commit. But sometimes we try to find a solution. A good example would be an actor. So we have two definitions between the two standards. Uh, or, for example, an organization does not exist within Archimate. So maybe the answer could be something like, well, we want to create the specializations of an actor, which could be an organization. So this is work in progress. Uh, this moment, I've been working on more or less 100 terms. Uh, more to come. Uh, there is a team of people who are going to review and come with a list of subjects that request for changes for both uh, framework, obviously subject to approval. Okay. Yeah, I, think oh, oh. I was really interested in in not fusing the two standards together, but certainly having a high degree of interoperability between them is not a bad thing at all. It's just we don't want to create a single standard. We want to keep them, you know, if some people just want a modeling tool, they should be able to use that without TOGAF. If they if they want to use TOGAF with some other modeling language, they should be able to do that as well. Okay. Yes, I want to support also that uh, that response from uh, from Bill and also from Serge. I think like uh, our idea with this project, uh, in fact, part one uh, was uh, the, the main goal was to deliver the white papers, and phase two is just beginning, like Serge said. And uh, the goal here is to come up with some change requests for both the specifications in order to get like uh, them work better together. However, it's not our intention to merge them. So you could continue, for example, your decision is to use TOGAF. With another modeling language, or use Archimate with another framework like Sackman or Dodaf, you can also do that. Our idea here is to try to harmonize both standards, so they can, if the a practitioner to decide to use Dodaf with Archimate, it would be easier than the way that it is right now. But it's still keeping the boundaries in what happens if I need to use Dodaf with another modeling language or Archimate with another framework. So that's like two different levels of harmonizations in here. Okay. Excellent. Well, I'm just keeping an eye on the time, but I think we've got uh, just a amount of time for one last question. This question is from Chad. They asked, which one of the publications would you consider the master data model or ERD for the entity crosswalk between the TOGAF 9.1 framework and Archimate elements? Wow, that's a great question. Uh, hard to answer, really, because I think it's very context dependent on your enterprise and yeah. your modeling too. Um, yeah. I'd say, you know, the, the TOGAF framework is pretty grand in scope, but it doesn't go as detailed as the Archimate language does. So yeah. could you create a common library of entities and relationships that would achieve both objectives? I don't know. Uh, I think you uh, would have to make that decision yourself. And you know, it could be that somebody would publish a, a white paper that might suggest how to do that. That's a, that would be a great thing to think about. Yeah. I think, like, if it comes to the white papers, I will start with the practitioner guide, which is, like, the master document. And then if you need more detail, like uh, Bill said, uh, uh, because you need more detail for your particular situation, I'll go with the globe stories and then the meta model. I mean, the, which, uh, the order in the white paper are showed in the slide. Because when we go into the meta model and then and relationship uh, harmonization, you will see a very detailed uh, tables in there that will show item by item the mapping between the two of them. And that can be useful. But again, it will depend on your needs. For example, if you're, using, you're trying to harmonize your information or architecture, you will look for a specific elements into both standards that can be harmonized. And if you're trying to look for harmonization in your business architecture, then you will take the elements and the entities that will belong to that particular domain. So I guess it, like, it would depend on the particular need that you have. Okay. Well, I think this is a good time to... Uh close today's event. So I'd like to thank Phil, Serge and Sonia for today's presentations and I'd like to thank you all for attending today's event. Please do keep an eye on the Open Group website for future webinars which we will be scheduling in the near time. So once again, thank you everyone and I'd like to say goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for being here. Bye. Okay.